I want to talk to you about dados, specifically what they are, how to use a dado stack, and the issues with them, and how to solve that. So the first part, what is a dado? Well, a dado is a groove in a board. This is a groove. This is actually called a dado, and this is a rabbit. Anytime you're cutting the slot with the grain of the wood, that's a groove. It goes down the length of the wood. If you're cutting across the grain like this, then you're going to make the dado. That is the actual dado. And this last one is the rabbit, and that's a relief on the side of the board. You can also use these to cut tenons and to do half laps. Now, this is made so that another board can easily sit inside and it can support it. You can use this for cabinets, shelves, joinery, all sorts of types of things, all sorts of things. The easiest way to cut these are with dado stacks. Now you can also use routers, but that's a different setup. So here's a quick view of what it looks like when the dado stack cuts. You can see I started the machine. I'm pushing the piece across the blades, which is going to clean out that groove underneath it. I'm going to take the piece off and it lines right up with the blades. There are two types of dado stacks. There are eight inches and six inches. I use this eight inch set from Ridge Carbide. All of them come with two blades. They're usually marked this side out, or at least one of them is. And you'll see that the teeth point to the outside. They're gonna cut out on that side. In between those blades, you're gonna put chippers. There are three types of chippers, like this one, like this, or there are ones with one solid piece in the middle, sort of like that. I like this, about four chippers are all you need, but this removes the bulk of the waste. When you put these together, the teeth have to fit so that they are offset. They can't be together, they have to be offset to allow the teeth to fit in between the uh, blades. They'll often come with shims as well. These are magnetic shims which stick stick to the uh, blade or you might have little metal pieces. All the chip chippers and shims are usually marked with sizes so you know the thickness. You do need a special insert for your table saw if you're going to use that. You can't use your regular insert unless you want to tear it up. So this is important to know for cutting them. One of the issues with dado stacks is finding the width of the board with the numbers of chippers. They are marked, some of them are marked and they'll give you information about which ones to use, but what happens if you have a non-standard width? So the easiest way to do it, what a lot of people do is they'll take their blades and their chippers and they'll stack them up on the outside here and they'll just lay them side by side until they can feel how it's set up. The problem with it is that you're gonna to have to put the blades on your table set and you're gonna cut several different test cuts to find out if they are correct. And the issue is that you will either be too big, too small, or just right, and you'll have to have changed the blade each time, which takes time. In order to fix from being too small to too large, I added a chipper. This took me a minute and a half. This is sped up 10 times, which is a lot of wasted time. In order to make it go faster, I created this little simple jig that will allow me to stack up my data or my boards into the jig, and then I can test the width to what I'm cutting. It's really simple to make. We're gonna go do this right now. Two four inch by nine inch uh, pieces of plywood, a little handle, and a 5 16 inch bolt with a wing nut. All right, let's go over and do this. The first step is to drill the holes for the bolt. Because I want the bolt head to sit flush and not make the whole piece rock, I'm going to countersink it with a uh, four center bit. Now I'm drilling the hole four and a half inches from the end and one and a half inches in. I used a three quarter inch uh, four center bit, or I should have, I actually used 11 16. So it doesn't quite fit, but when I make it fit, it does. So anyway, here's the second part. I'm going to start drilling holes. I used a small uh, drill bit just to line them up so I could then just line up my 5 16 inch bit and go down through both of them individually just to make my life easier. It's obviously important that these two holes line up because the bolt is going to pass through them and you don't want it to be sitting at an angle. So I just did that and then I cleaned off the uh, torn up parts from where it split out even though I tried to keep it from splitting. You know how it goes. 
All right, next step is to put the uh, bolt in there. And I told you I used uh, too small of a bit. I found my three quarter inch bit, but whatever. It made it fit. It sits in there. Everything is flush straight up and down. There's my thumb screw. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a little bevel on the ends of these because I want it to slip over whatever I'm going to be measuring easily. I don't want it to uh, get stuck and hung up and peel off the plywood. Now, once I have my eight inch blades in there, I'm going to have about three quarter inch with that bevel. So a little less than three quarter inch to fit over and check the width of whatever piece I'm measuring to make sure that the number of uh, dado blades that I have in there and the chippers are the right width. Now you can see I got everything together here and I'm going to put a handle on. One of the key things is making sure that the handle is on the right side of the bolt so your fingers don't hit it when you pick it up. You want to be able to carry this and move it around easily. So I put mine onto the right so that the bolt is coming up on my finger side. Now I bought the handle from Home Depot it's just a normal gate handle. Um, one of the key things is that those are like one inch screws. Make sure that you use three quarter inch or shorter screws so that you don't go through into the second part. Once that's all done, you put the pieces back together, uh, put on a washer and a wing nut. The washer is really important. And now let's go try it out. All right, now that this is done, let's give it a try. First thing I grabbed a sample board from back there. Uh, here are my blades. I'm going to take this off. Now I'm going to start putting the blades on and I'm going to start with an outside blade. Again, it says this side out. I'm going to make sure that the teeth are on the piece. There's a little lip in the front. For the chippers, there are two different ones, two ones that are different actually than all the others. Um, one sixteenth and a uh, three thirty second. So I'm going to set those aside and I'm going to start off with the one eighth inch uh, blades because those are going to be the ones that are really the hardest. Now the important thing here is to, or the ones that I'm going to use the most. The important thing here is to make sure the teeth are properly aligned between the teeth of the outside blade. So I've got three, let's go with three of these right now and see where I'm at. I want to see the overall height again, making sure that this sits in. All right, so if I turn it this way, you can see there's about a three, uh, three quarter inch section here. And I am still short. I don't know how short I am. So I'm going to grab one of my chippers here. And I'm going to put the, the thinner chipper in there to see how short I am. Again, putting that back on to make sure it lines up correctly. Because if it's not lining up the way it is in the, the blade or on the table saw, what's the point? All right, so I got that on there. If I can put the thumb screw on, always the most fun. All right, so I'm just tightening that on there. Again, you can see that the uh, wedge here, the bevel is on the front. There's about three quarter inch. Let's see. All right, so you can see that that does not fit in there. I can't shove that in. So obviously, that's not a good fit. So if I were doing this on the table saw, that would have been a practice cut that I would have needed to cut take a piece of wood, use, and then I would have had to go back. Now that one was tight, or it didn't go in. That's going to be too small. So let's go to the other one eighth inch. Again, remember to line everything up so that the blades are the way and the teeth are the way they will be actually on the saw. Make sure everything is lined up. None of the teeth are sitting on top of each other. Okay. Take forever to put the thumb screw back on. It doesn't take forever, obviously. Okay, so I'm lining this back up. Let's see how that feels. All right, cool, I like that. And you can see that that just fits in there tight. And that's what I want. I want that fit where when I put that in there, it just slides in. All right, let's go do this on the table saw. The jig is also helpful as a carrying case to bring these pieces over to the table saw to put them on the arbor. Again, remember that the outside blades go on the outsides. Obviously, that means that that angle is pointing out and the chipper teeth fit in between. You have to line those up. The hard part is always going to be putting the nut and everything else on, but you'll only have to do it that one time. Once you get everything on, put your insert back on there. And now I like to use these micro jig uh, push blocks. It holds on to the back if the piece is small, allows me to easily push the pieces through.
All right, coming back from the saw, here's the jig. The blades are still on the saw. Nice and easy setup, easy way to make. Here's the piece that we cut with the sample size. Notice that it fits in there. It has the right amount of play. You can actually see there's very little gap on the side. This is a one size. I didn't have to go back and try again and again. This will give you enough space for glue if you want to glue up the sides as well so you don't have a glue-starved joint. Uh, there you go. You can't get any easier than that. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.